Well, before I get into scripture and such, I'm going to take you up to a place where Catherine and I hang out sometimes. It's just up the hill here. It's a nice place to go to get away from all that YouTube ruckus that goes on. Out this way is where the sun sets toward, th toward this way. And we'll set up chairs down here. Usually have a couple chairs down here. We'll look out, come out, out here especially at night. Very beautiful place to sit. We've come up here too and read the Bible. Sat usually down down here where we go. So I'm going to set this camera down for a minute and do this video. More than a minute actually. Jude verses 3 to 9. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward, destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Please consider that the word body can mean that which casts a shadow as distinguished from the shadow itself. Just go to Strong's Concordance online, type in Body of Moses, click on Search, and where Jude 1 9 is shown, click on the number. 4983 to the right of the word body. And we know that Moses delivered the law, which law was described in Hebrews as having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things. Hebrews 10 verses 1 to 5. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers, once purged, should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. So with the law having a shadow of good things, and not the very image, consider again that body I'm talking about, which casts a shadow as distinguished from the shadow itself. Now, according to Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 5 and 6, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died 
and he buried him. But no man knows of his sepulture unto this day, it says. The Lord buried him, according to that chapter. Deuteronomy 34, verses 5 and 6. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor, but no man knoweth of his sepulture unto this day. Now I know that a lot of people think that Michael disputed with Satan about the corpse of Moses, so that the people would not worship that kind of body in their wicked idolatry. But the power in Michael's testimony concerns the body of law that Moses once delivered and not a corpse. Consider that body of law that Moses once delivered as I read the following verses. Exodus 34, 27 and 28. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Yes, the law that Moses delivered, written on tables of stone, are referred to as the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Was that the words of the New Covenant? No, it was not. Deuteronomy 31, 16 to 22. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought, and that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel, put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen and fat, then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness. For it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imagination which they go about even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it the children of Israel. And that covenant was broken when Solomon broke the first of the Ten Commandments, the Old Covenant. And this is what that covenant slash commandment, this is that covenant slash commandment that he broke. Exodus 23, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. 1 Kings 11, 9 to 11. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, Forasmuch as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant, and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. And all Israel obeyed Solomon, according to 1 Chronicles 29:23. And Solomon, as I keep saying, received 603 score and six talents of gold, which is the number of the beast that was and is not, as I keep saying. Revelation 17:8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. 
Remember what was written in Jude? I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Solomon married the daughter of Pharaoh, according to Scripture, who is the great dragon. Ezekiel 29.3 Speak and say, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. Revelation 12, 7-9 And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That's some father-in-law for Solomon. Now I'm going to read verse 9 in Jude again and talk more about that. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. If we consider what the word rebuke actually means here, we can understand better who the Lord did rebuke. Consider this meaning of rebuke. To show honor to. To honor and honor can mean a valuing by which the price is fixed either of the price itself or of the price paid or received for a person or thing bought or sold. And I didn't get that from a, a Webster's dictionary either, so you know. I'm saying that people are either living under a dead body of law to their own destruction or they are saved by the grace of God through the mediator of the new covenant. Michael does not bring a railing accusation against Moses, the servant of God, and was saying that the Lord rebuke honors him who was faithful in all his house, as it is written. Hebrews 3, verses 1 to 6. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, and as much as he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 4 to 14. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious for if the ministration of condemnation be glory much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory for even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, 
we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. The Ten Commandments is an old covenant dead body of law. Not because God broke covenant, but because the people did. Hebrews 8, 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.